Ah, all right, seven days have flown by, which gives you a solo overnight in the woods. This one is gonna be completely different. I mentioned a few weeks ago that frog season was coming. Well, guess what, it's here. Let's go out to our spot and we'll talk about it and get set up. Okay, so I mentioned this video here was gonna be different. It's different in the fact that I'm not gonna spend 15 to 18 hours building some gigantic structure. We're heading into the sixth or seventh week of YouTube not circulating videos. So I'm taking a break. I'm gonna focus more on the bushcraft technology aspect in this video. I mentioned frog seasons here. So I brought some pre-made frog gigs. We're gonna carve a frog gig. And most importantly, I wanna do an experiment where we cast aluminum against the earth and create an aluminum ingot that we can turn into an aluminum frog gig. Okay, so I want a casting flask. I want to go ahead and make a box here. The trick is going to be I need to notch these out. Okay, so here we go. I went ahead and batoned that two times and I was left with a two by four looking piece of wood. And this is actually beautiful because if you look at it, there's a piece of hardwood right down the center. So what I want to do here is remove the material here and here and take it all the way back to that hardwood. That's the part that's going to go inside of my spear. This end over here, I can go ahead and utilize that for the tines on my frog gig. And this is what we call an ingot. This will be pounded into my flask. I'll then remove this and pour the molten aluminum inside of one hole. It will travel and fill the void and then go up the other hole. Once it does that, I know the void has been filled and I have my aluminum ingot. Okay, so in a nutshell, here's exactly what's gonna happen. We have our template and two dowels. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the earth and place our template inside and pound it down to where it's completely flush with the earth. Next, take our two dowels, place one on one side and one on the other. There's an entrance hole and an exit hole. I'm then gonna get clay from that creek and fill this entire flask up and pound it down to where it's completely tight and packed inside there. Next step, slowly twist and remove our dowels. Next, lift our frame, pull out our template, and you're left with hole A, hole B, and an empty void the shape of this template. From that point right there, 
we can take our molten aluminum, pour it into hole A, it will travel filling that void and rise up through hole B. Once I see that, I know that void is full and we have our template. And there we go, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so we need a ridge pull and a tarp, and then I'll call this thing good. Uh, but you're noticing that the video format's a little bit different. Worked on some hard stuff, took a break to the shelter. We know we need a ridge pull and a tarp. We're gonna take a break and go back over here. Kind of like a windshield wiper. Boom, 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 boom. Metrodome, move side to side like Rocky.
Okay, now the final step before I go ahead and get that clay inside there and I tap it or compact it in there, I want to go ahead and put a light dusting of foot powder. Now you can use baby powder. Now right now someone's triggered and they're saying, foot powder, you could just use wood ash. Lols. Well, here's the thing with that. A, I don't have a fire, so I don't have any wood ash. And B, the wood ash has to be screened through an actual screen or sometimes a sifting device to get all the carbon, coals, and chunks of burnt wood out of there. Otherwise, it's gonna mess up the flask in your form. So I try to make this realistic as possible. A lot of people hike or go camping and they bring foot powder. So we're gonna use foot powder. If you like what you see here, please do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. Then take it a step further, grab your cell phone, download the free YouTube app and sign in. This will give you push notifications when my new videos drop. So we created a makeshift rocket stove here out of wood. It's being fed from the back, and you can see and hear it working. I'm gonna go ahead and place my ladle, my aluminum can, right inside there, and hopefully that can start to melt, and I'll just keep feeding it cans. Thirty cans later. That appeared to work, however, I have my doubts. Like I said, I have my doubts, but we're left with a basic shape. That I can work with. I have a file and a small hacksaw so I'm going to work on this for about an hour or two and try and clean it up and salvage it. Now I went wrong in two places. One, you need a top and a bottom frame. It's called a flask. You get a tighter seal and then the air can actually escape from that one hole and you're good to go. Second thing was I believe I poured it too quickly. I have no way to gauge that. Aluminum melts around 1250 degrees so I had to try to increase that by throwing wood on it and I think it just got too hot and I just, when I poured it, it was just real quick. The air couldn't escape fast enough and so it kind of messed it up. But, lesson learned for next time. So let's go ahead and clean this bad boy up, see what we got.
Okay, so that was a three hour nightmare that you don't want, believe me. Um, probably better off just go jack a stop sign somewhere and just hack it up and carve it out how you want it. But does it work? Yes. Does it cast basic shapes? Yes. Um, and if I had to do it in the field for some reason, I could. But I'll stick with my foundry at home and my green sand. Um, with that said though, reflecting on this process, I really believe it was the holes need to be a little bit larger so the air can escape and pour a little bit slower and that should be good to go. So now I want to go ahead and fasten this to a stick and then we'll carve an actual frog gig and talk about the credit card frog gigs. So let's get her done. Okay, so we went ahead and made our frog gig. Now, if you don't want to go through the three-hour nightmare, don't do it. Simply carry one inside your wallet. This one here is from Grim Survival. It's stainless steel. It's really thin. And it comes in this stainless steel frame in two parts. Just break it away. Then one goes inside the other. There's an actual slot right here. Put that bad boy in there. It sort of locks in place. And then take your stick just like that one over there, shave it down, and then simply split it two ways. It gives you four sections, and you can slide that bad boy in there and then just tie it off. As always, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One of my Amazon influencer page and two my Self-Reliance Outfitters influencer page. And if you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. So all we did here is I went ahead and tied this like a whipping for a rope, and then I'm just going to go ahead and carve my tines out. That comes off like butter. Okay, so last two things on the agenda, eat and then frog hunt, or frog hunt then eat, or eat, frog hunt, eat. Kind of like the old hobbit's second breakfast. Um, there's one thing I want to talk about real quick. Um, I appreciate everyone's support last week. We had an issue and everyone showed their support. However, nowhere in my talk last week did I name drop anyone. I was addressing trolls. Along with that, nowhere in my talk last week did I say ever to go and troll somebody else, go into their Facebook, go into their YouTube uh, comment section, or go into their Instagram and telling them they're a piece of S, um, you're unsubscribing. Um, I never said that. And I would like to think that my legion is above that. Let other channels troll. I don't want my legion trolling anyone. So I'm going to ask you a favor. Stop it now. We are the cut above, okay? Do not do this. And if you did post a derogatory comment on anyone's channel, I ask that you please remove that. And this shows that we are above this. 
We are obviously rising above this, and we're going to continue to be above this. We're setting the example, leadership by example. Okay? Again, I appreciate the support. I love you guys. Thank you for everything. Now it's complete. Bacon, bison, chili. Got my bacon spoon. Oh my god. Hands down. Stowaway gourmet. My all time favorite dehydrated food. Um, MREs are a step above this, but this is dehydrated. This is really good. Once again, stowaway gourmet dudes, bacon. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. I'm gonna finish this. Yeah, we're hitting that pond over there looking for some frogs. Stick with me. Mm. ASS Kickin' Moonshine Pepper Mash Hot Sauce. Oh man, that's good. That's really good. And this tastes just like chicken. Get you all a few. That hit the spot, tell you what. So, two frogs, so did the frog gig work? Yes, it did. Um, three hours of finagling and messing around, but tell you what, come hell or high water, we're gonna get her done. Um, 2333, 11.33 p.m. So, I'm done for the night, I'm gonna turn in. So, catch you all in the morning, we'll get up, eat, coffee time, and talk about this shelter.
Coffee time. always outstanding. Let's go ahead and talk about this video. Now, the focus of the video was not the shelter. Although we came out to the woods, built a tripod trash bag raised shelter in the woods with a dugout fire pit. That in itself was outstanding. The focus of the video was bushcraft technology. I wanted to take the idea or concept of a metal melting foundry and apply that to the woods. We built one, we cast a shape, in this case an aluminum ingot against the earth, and then filed it and cut it into a working frog gig. Am I happy with the ingot? I am not. I am OCD AF and a perfectionist. That bothers me. And it bothers me to even show it on this video. Um, but in the end, did it work? Yes. Um, so inadvertently, it was successful. Um, but something I need to work on as far as the field goes. At home, I've, I have an actual foundry um, and flasks and green sand, and I have videos from the past that it was never a problem. I've just never taken that out here and applied it to a campfire setting. But it's good to know that it is possible, and I learned a lot in the process. So, more to come. I wanna build up to eventually casting copper and bronze. So, big things coming. And there you go, solo overnight building a bushcraft raised shelter and foundry in the woods. Just keeps getting better and better. More to come, we're six and a half months into the new year and we're just getting warmed up. As always, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon influencer page and two, my Self-Reliance Outfitters influencer page. And if you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time. Boom, we're still here. Okay, for those that stuck around, check this out. Two things. First off, I have an Instagram page, Corporal's Corner Instagram. If you're not on it, you're wrong. Check that bad boy out. And two, that oilskin 6x8 tarp that I featured in this video, along with an 8x8 oilskin tarp, is available at Self-Reliance Outfitters. That link is inside my description box. Get yours today.